Okay, we're talking about infinite geometric series here, and it's actually really quite a fascinating aspect, and you can tie this into a lot of uh, a calculus, and you're talking about convergent and divergent series, all that good stuff. So this is actually pretty cool. And basically what it uh, reads is that the sum of a series is equal to the first term divided by 1 minus r, but there's a stipulation behind that. Uh, the, the common ratio of a series has to be within the bounds of negative 1 and 1. And it can't be equal to 1. And it can't be equal to negative 1. It has to be within the constraints. Not, it can't be, it doesn't say less than or equal to. It's got to actually be less than 1. Uh, so with that in consideration, I'll go ahead and show you this. And basically, the only difference between infinite geometric se uh, sorry, series and a geometric series is that, you know, like, I was, I was doing, like, three problems and I stopped. That's a finite geometric sequence. It stops. I'm sorry, series, but I guess you can look at it as a sequence if you look at it. It's just by individual terms instead of the sum. But for this one, what I'm saying is, I'm going to take this right here, and this confuses students. They get so upset about it initially. I'm going to say, if I have a series, a geometric series, by the way, and I'm stating that this is geometric, that follows this pattern, if I add up all the numbers together, and it's going on forever, I'm telling you, that it will not go past a certain number. That actually, it will have an upper bound. That it, it, it'll, you know, kind of be asymptotic, as it were. You know, like if I was, if I was graphing the actual series as it was. I'm saying that if you add up all these numbers together, it won't add up to infinity. It will actually be capped, and it'll be capped at a small number too. A lot of people don't necessarily believe that, but it's actually really quite cool. So with that in mind. I'm going to try to figure out what this is. And I'm going to use this formula right here, a sub 1 over 1 minus r. Now, the r is, um, there's a couple ways to look at it for a geometric se um, series. Pardon me. You could look at what you're dividing or what you're multiplying. Um, so if you take, you know, a half uh, divided by a fourth, you get 2. Half divided by a fourth is 2, yes. Uh, dividing by 2 is the same thing as multiplying by a half. And that's actually essentially what I'm doing here. I'm multiplying each term by a half to get to the next term. You know, one half times one half is a fourth. A fourth times uh, a half is an eighth. And it's just the same common ratio over and over again. Well, okay, so the common ratio is less than one, but it's still greater than negative one. Okay, so that story checks out. Well, if I add up all these together, remind, I have to remind you that it goes on forever and ever and ever that it's going to be bound, it's going to be limited. So my sum, yeah, that's good enough, equals my a term, which is a half, divided by 1 minus whatever the ratio is. Well, the ratio is a half. So when I simplify that out, I got a half, a 1 minus a half is a half, a half divided by a half is the same thing as a half times 2 over 1, Eh, if you don't believe that, I can actually rewrite that. A half divided by a half is the same thing as one half times two over one. My sum is equal to one. If I add up all these terms together, it will never go to one. It'll get infinitely and infinitely and infinitely and infinitely closer, I mean, I guess, theoretically but its upper bound is 1. It's convergent, which means it converges towards a number. And that's when you deal like in your uh, second semester of calculus or second year, depending if you take it at the college level or if you take it at the high school level. You'll learn about this, and this is like the most fun stuff to learn about because it gives you a break from some of the, you know, from some of the stuff that's slightly difficult. I mean, but if you practice it, it's not that bad. So this series converges. Now, let me give you an example of something that doesn't converge. So let's say I have an infinite geometric sequ uh, series, pardon me, 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus blah, 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 blah. Now the ratio here is 2. That's the common ratio. It already falls outside of the bound of the common ratio that we need. So you can't apply this formula. If you don't believe me, go ahead. If you keep having this number go on forever and ever, it adds and adds and adds and adds and adds. It becomes infinite. It doesn't actually go towards any specific number. I mean, it goes towards infinity, but it never actually reaches it. It never has an upper bound. And in this case, this series is something that diverges. And that's really the only difference between infinite geometric uh, series and finite. You know, uh, finite geometric series will stop at a certain number of terms. An infinite one will keep going and going and going. 
But what's really cool is that even if it keeps going and going and going, there are infinite geometric series that actually have an upper bound. There's actually a problem in calculus. It's uh, based off of Gabriel's, Gabriel's horn. I forgot what the guy who invented it is called, but it's Gabriel's horn. It's, it's really quite cool. And if I ever you know, get my video lessons all the way up to that level, which would take some time anyways because I've got to get through what I have to get through first, I can use that as an example. But it's really quite cool. It's, it's basically a problem that has a, a, a infinite surface area, but it has a finite volume. And, it's, and what I tell my students, although they don't teach it now, so, but like what I did when I was showing them was that like if you take a piece of Play-Doh, uh, even though it has a finite um, volume, you can always extend the surface area. And it's kind of like the same concept. It will always have the same volume, but you can keep expanding and expanding the surface area based on just the one lump of Play-Doh, uh, Play pardon me, depending how you form it. Uh, but I'm going too far on a tangent there, and I should probably stop. So I hope you found that helpful. I want to do something with uh, um, sigma notation, and that should be it for infinite geometric sequence uh, series. Pardon me. Uh, with that said, have a good day. Goodbye.